All right, my friends. Um, today I'm gonna give you three tips to improve your video work. And if you follow these three tips, you're going to dramatically improve your programs. And it's just three tips and it's going to make a world of difference. All right, so tip number one, um, get good audio, right? And tip number two is to get good audio. And tip number three is get good audio. And if you follow any one of these tips, you will have a much better video at the end of the day. All right, after that cheeky little start, um, the point is that I, I just can't say enough about how important it is to get good audio. In fact, I think audio is even more important to your finished product than your visuals. As an audience, we can be really forgiving of visuals. We can see something that's out of focus, the colors aren't quite right, maybe the camera's shaky, um, and we'll be okay with it. But as soon as we can't understand what someone's saying, as soon as their voice is being muffled by the sound of traffic or uh, just the atmosphere of the room, um, yeah, as soon as we're struggling to hear, then we have a problem. The other thing about audio is it's really hard to clean up if you don't get it right. If you are filming someone by the freeway, you can't just easily go into post-production and do a noise reduction filter and clean up the freeway and their voice sounds just fine. Every time you drop away whatever to tones are in the freeway, those frequencies also appear in the human voice and the person's voice starts to sound hollow and tinny and it's like it's coming out of an old-fashioned telephone or something like that and it just doesn't sound right and i personally really hate doing that to people i think if someone has a nice voice um it's unfair to start dropping frequencies out of it and make it sound um worse than it is so i think audio is so important to get right also with the visuals if something's uh you know, slightly underexposed or overexposed, it's easy to clean that up in post. Uh, if you have the colors wrong, you can fix that in post. If the composition isn't quite right, you can zoom it in and move it around a little bit in post. You can do a lot to fix it, whereas with audio, it's much harder. All this is to say, it's really important to get, get good audio on location. Now, I think one of the reasons um, a lot of times audio is forgotten about is because it sort of takes, no sort of about it, it definitely takes a backseat on cameras that we're using. Uh, buy most cameras and you'll have dozens and dozens, you can get in the menu and you'll have dozens and dozens of image settings and most of them you'll never even use. You've just got you're flooded with all these different ways to adjust the image. And if you're lucky, you can maybe adjust volume, maybe add a compressor or a limiter, and that's about it for audio. You are just not offered very much in terms of audio. The camera manufacturer puts all of their effort into the image and telling you how many megapixels the camera is and how much zoom it has, but fails to say anything about the audio or to do anything to really make sure you're getting good audio. So um, I think there's a natural inclination for us to also put all, all our energy into the visuals and forget that audio is really what's going to tell the story. To be an audio engineer takes a lifetime of work and, um, and it's real craft and a very technical craft. Um, learning about the different microphones, the different pickup patterns from the microphones, um, you know, how to, where to place the microphone, uh, audio post-production tools, how to use compressors and limiters and EQ and make it all and finesse the audio to make it really sound good is, um, it, it takes a lifetime of work. But luckily, 
with just a few simple tips, some real basic stuff, you can get 90% of the way there. Um, 80% of the way there. All right, so some basic audio tips. Here they go. The first one is pay attention to your location. If you're doing an interview or something where the audio you're picking up is going to be make it into the final mix, you're going to really want to pay attention to that location. And when I walk into a location, if I'm going to do an interview, I don't look at the location first. The first thing I do is listen. I listen for, uh, is there a refrigerator humming? Is there a fan on the ceiling, you know, spinning and making noise? Uh, if there's a conference room and it's on the side of the road next to the freeway and you can hear the freeway noise, or if there's another conference room that may not look as good, it may not be as big, it may not be as, um, I don't know, just as, uh, as aesthetically pleasing, but I don't hear the freeway, I will take the one where I don't hear the background noise because I know I can, I can dress the location. I can bring in some plants, I can add some nice lights. And if I'm doing an interview, chances are I'm going to be filming B-roll on top of that interview. So I can get a bunch of pretty shots that will take the attention off of the look of the interview and I will still have that really nice audio to help me tell the story. And if it sounds professional, again, if it sounds professional and the audio is really clear, as an audience, we'll be on board. I'm going to make a little, uh, to, I'm going to make a little caveat here, which is, um, this is true for Access Bellingham, for our shoots, for most video productions with a small crew. On Hollywood sets, this is not true. The visuals are more important than the audio, or at least of equal importance. Uh, on the few Hollywood sets I've been on, it's definitely been all about getting the right shots. And the audio guys always come secondary. And it's always been, they're going to do their best to get the shot. But the difference is that they have so many more resources. They can bring the actors in after the fact to film, you know, to do dialogue replacement. They can, they have uh, just m many, many more noise reduction tools and ways to deal with, uh, with any audio issue issues in post-production. Okay, so the second thing is you want to get the microphone up close. So for example, in this shoot, I have my microphone right, it's right here. I mean, it's just out of frame. I can, I can touch it right there. And I will shoot some behind the scenes stuff for us in, in a moment. Our microphone is right here. This is what it sounds like uh, when you're behind the microphone and away from the microphone. And it's clamped on to the table with a simple clamp pointed right at me. This far away from the, uh, uh, the, where the camera was placed. But you can see that it's a very, very simple system. It's a middle of the road microphone. It's clamped to the table. Um, it's got just an, you know, uh, inexpensive consumer cord taking it to the camera. And there's nothing fancy about this setup at all. But it doesn't need to be fancy. I have a decent room and the, uh, the, uh, the microphone's nice and close. The third step is wear headphones. Always be monitoring your audio. So, and there's a difference between just having the headphones on and kind of listening. And taking that moment to put the headphones on Close your eyes and really listen to what are the background noises, what are the distractions, what is going to take away from the audience paying attention 
to the interview or to the dialogue that you're capturing and to see what you can do about cleaning up that location, getting the microphone closer, or what you can do to make sure you have really, really solid audio. So always be monitoring. I think it's really important also to be monitoring even when you don't think you're using the dialogue. I can't tell you how many times, well, probably only a couple because hopefully I learned my lesson, but when I was starting out, I would be filming B-roll, additional stuff that I didn't think I'd need the dialogue, and I would get it back into my editing suite, I'd be watching and I'd listen, and someone would say something that was really good, just out of the, you know, not in an interview, just off the cuff, they'd say something that was really good that I really wanted to use, and I was so busy focusing on the visuals that I would just turn the camera off halfway through what they were saying. I may not have even been wearing my headphones. So I've learned my lesson now, and even if I don't think I'm using the audio, I will always have my headphones on. Um, and at the very least, they're around my neck, if I'm absolutely certain, like there's no way I'm going to use this audio. They might be around my neck, but they're always really close at hand. And you never know until you get into the edit what shots are gonna work, what audio you're going to need. It's just a good idea to be at 100% with all of it. Okay, so you've, um, you've got a good location, you've got your mic nice and close, you're monitoring with your, you know, you're using your ears, you're really listening to what you're picking up. The final thing is your audio levels. And these are on your camera, they'll also be on your, uh, uh, in your editing software. You'll have audio levels, and they will range from zero on downward into negative numbers. So zero, negative six, negative 12, negative 18, negative 24, on down. And you want those audio levels to sit right around negative 12. Um, they can bump up to negative six, that's just fine. If they hit zero, you're in trouble. And my refrigerator just kicked on. So I bet you can hear that which is really interesting because in my day-to-day -day life, I never noticed the refrigerator popping on. But I bet we'll hear it right away in this uh, video. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to be right back. Look at that, what a great lesson in paying attention to the sounds around us. Um, I'll be really interested when we watch this uh, final, final video, what that, actually, uh, what that actually sounds like. All right, um, where was I? I had audio levels, negative, uh, negative 12. If they hit zero, it's called clipping. And as soon as the audio level hits zero, you no longer have information. Um, it's just static and garbled. So you can never let it hit zero. That's the, the main takeaway from all this. If your audio levels are hitting zero, you're gonna have a problem. If you're using your auto levels on many cameras, they have a built-in limiter that protects the audio level from going to zero. So if you're watching your meters, it will look like it's hitting zero, but it's not. So um, the best thing you need to do is to learn your camera and uh, learn how far you can go before you start clipping that audio. Because as soon as you clip the audio, it's gone and it's unusable. All right, so that's the basics of audio. Good location, get the mic nice and close, wear your headphones, really listen. Uh, keep your audio levels around negative 12. Don't let them clip. Don't let them hit zero. And if you do that, you'll truly be 80% of the way to getting really nice audio, regardless of the situation, regardless of what microphone you have, um, irregardless of everything else. I am going to bring this into uh, my editing program 
and create part two for next week, which is going to be audio post-production. So uh, next week, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at audio post-production. All right, homework for this week. Homework for this week, take whatever camera you have, uh, whatever microphone you have, if that's an iPhone, if that's a proper camera, whatever it is, if it's a tablet, do a test. Record yourself saying some dialogue. Think of some dialogue you want to record, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, put the camera two feet away. Record yourself saying the dialogue. Then move the camera five feet away. Record yourself saying the dialogue. Then eight feet away. And then, you know, across the room, 10 feet away, however far you can get. And do a little test to see where does the audio break down with your setup. One of the most important things is to really understand the gear that you're using. So if you know, if you're six feet away and it still sounds nice and clear, that's good to know. That means you can move your camera six feet away. If you're 10 feet away and it sounds like garbage, then you know if you're 10 feet away, even though you're able to zoom in with the camera, your microphone doesn't zoom. You can zoom with the camera, but you'll have to physically pick your microphone up and get it closer to your subject. Where does your audio break down? It's a really important thing to know. Sometimes there's no way to get the microphone off the camera quickly and to be able to work. And you'll just need to bring your camera, wide angle lens, bring your camera right into the situation to get that interview. Um, so your homework is to figure out, to learn your camera, learn your microphone, and uh, learn what you can get away with. All right, well, I hope that helped you learn a little something about audio. This was by request. We had a couple people who wanted to learn more about audio. Uh, it looks like, according to our governor, it looks like we've got a few weeks until we start to open up slowly but surely. And uh, hopefully in the next month to six weeks, we'll all be seeing each other face to face. So I look forward to that. And until then, stay healthy, stay safe, have fun.